Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 Talk, where today we'll be talking about forecast configurations, which is a new preview feature in Dynamics 365 for sales. But before we dive in, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Dion Taylor. You can take a look at my blog at d365goddess.com or follow me on Twitter at d365goddess. So this morning when I logged in, I saw this, this really weird, I don't want to say it's an error, but it was maybe more of a warning. So this is what I saw when I was logging in and taking a look at my forecast. So you can see that forecast definitions have been removed from Dynamics 365 and they have now been replaced by forecast configuration. So this is going to be a new entity. Now, what we can do with forecasts is probably pretty self-explanatory, right? We can really predict or forecast how much revenue an individual in the sales team will generate in a specific time frame. So this is a really good example of that, right? I have a manager and he has a couple of folks that are reporting to him, including, well, he doesn't report to himself, but I have him added to this team as well. So we can kind of see how much the quota is for each forecast period, as you can see over here. And then we can kind of see also how we're doing for that, right? We can see what our quota is. We can see all of these different types, right? Best case, committed, lost, omitted, and in the pipeline and one obviously as well. Now, these are obviously, these different columns that you see here are actually based on a field that is added to the opportunity. And I can bring that up real quick to kind of show you. Just go ahead and open up. And just go ahead and try to find that. This is that field. It is that forecast category field and this is how we can tag those opportunities and that's then how they show up in my forecast let me just go back here right in the different categories and again that's what we see here all of those columns here okay so let's take a look at how we can actually configure a forecast I am going to navigate from sales to my app settings. And then I'm gonna go down here and here is that new entity forecast configurations. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete this current one. We're just gonna go ahead and recreate that forecast. So as you can see, there's currently only one template that is available and it looks like they're working on a territory forecast template and a product based forecast template as well. So we're just going to use the org chart forecast. Now, David, I'm actually logged in as David, has some people that are reporting to him. So let me actually show you that if I go here to users. Security, security, oh, not security roles, users. I'm gonna take a look at the enabled users. If I look at David So here, we can see here that Chris, Rob, and Teresa are actually reporting to him. So how does that work in a forecast setup? I'm gonna give it a name. David's forecast. You can name that anything, obviously. You can see here that the entity has already been chosen. The hierarchy is made up of a user. I can't change that either. And then let's go ahead and select David as that top user in that hierarchy. There we go. And now it's actually creating a preview and basically loading that relationship, right? That managerial relationship. Here's the manager and here are again those direct reports. Now the next thing that I can do here in a general section is I can choose a forecast period and it can either be monthly 
or quarterly. Right? We can pick a fiscal year and then we can start with a particular quarter as well. Right now, if I want to go ahead and do this 12 months out, I can just go ahead and say I am going to use four. I'm going to set four as a number of periods. And as I set those periods and my start forecast, you can see here that it's already populating the valid from and the valid to dates. Now, if I would set this for next year, 2020, and I would set this to quarter one to start with, you can see here that that's January 01, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Now, I don't have that many opportunities in the system, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave this from October 1st, 2019 to September 30th, 2020. Then we're going to click on next. And now we're basically going to configure those columns, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and click add from option set. And this is that forecast category field that I just showed you, right? With those options. So this is an option set. Obviously it has to be an option set, right? To be able to, uh, to use that. So I'm going to hit on choose select it. And as you can see it now is asking me if I want to auto configure those columns with the standard configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I can go in and configure those as well. So again, you can see here in the preview all of the columns. If there's certain columns that you don't want to put in there, maybe I don't want admitted in there, but I want the other ones, you can just uncheck that box. And then what I can do, I can actually go ahead and take a look at those configurations. I can change the names in here. I can change the fields in there. So I want to take a look at the estimated revenue and estimated close date. And here is that selector. Those are those values in that field. And then I can even, I can allow adjustments or I can just show progress compared to the data or to the quota and not allow those adjustments. So that's just a matter of checking and unchecking those boxes. And I can do that for each one of those options in the option set. So committed is also estimated revenue, estimated close date. That's fine. And I want to be able to show progress. Then we have lost. Now for lost, I want to use the actual revenue. No, I still want to use my estimated revenue because my actual revenue is going to be zero if it's lost. So I'm going to use estimated revenue. Where is my estimated? Oh, I actually already had that selected and I want to keep the date on actual close day. Again, we want to show the progress compared to the quota and then I can hit save and close. Then we have pipeline. Let's take a look at that estimated revenue, estimated close date. Yep them to adjust things Save and close and then lastly the one actual close date actual revenue that is correct show allow progress and let's go ahead and oh that was actually already correct so I can just hit cancel for that now you can see here that I actually cannot put in the actual quota numbers in here. It even says to me, be sure to upload quota data. Now what I can do is change the name of that particular column directly in here, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. My next step is to publish my forecast. So if everything looks good, I can just hit that publish button and then I just have to wait. A few seconds and we can see now that our forecast has successfully published now as you can see here a quota can be uploaded anytime after the configuration is published okay so what we want to do right now is we want to download that quota template so let's just give that a second it just downloaded it so let's open that up now the way that this works is we see here we have all of these different tabs here but you can see that there's really only 
two different types, right? We have one for the individual and then we have one for the manager. Now, what that means is that the manager goal is, is usually the team goal, right? Including the manager that's working on that. So for example, if Rob has a total number of 200,000 for this particular quarter, and let's give them all the same number to keep it easy, right? Uh, what we can do here is we can say each of those individuals, we want to make sure that in that particular quarter, we want them to give them a quota as for $200,000, right? Now the manager quota is, is really the sum of all of those, right? Everything will roll up to that manager, which in this case is David So. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make that $800,000. Now again, let me make this actually a little bit bigger and let me make this a little bit better. So, so again, we can see here each individual, including the manager, has a quarterly goal of $200,000 and then everything rolled up right to the manager, all of those efforts combined are then whatever I put in here. Now again, you saw earlier that I actually did four quarters, so you have to make sure that you want to enter the data for all of those. Now you don't have to do that at the same time because you can any at any time go back and put those numbers in there. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. I just want to make sure, oh, it's actually in my downloads folder. And then what I want to do is I want to upload that. So I can either, as you can see, drag and drop that file in here, or I can just go ahead and navigate to my downloads and upload it then from there. I'm just going to give it a second here. It's just processing my Excel spreadsheet. And here you go. They, that processing has succeeded. So I'm going to just click on finish here. And you can see that just brings me back to that forecast. Now, if I want to make any changes to my forecast, if I click here on edit, uh, I can't really do that as you can see, right? Everything is kind of locked down. I can't change the user. I can't change my periods. Right, so this is really the way it is. We configure it one time. What we can do is upload the quota. So I can again download that quota template, put in my numbers, and then upload that again. Now let's take a look at if we go to the actual, here we go, forecasts and what that looks like for that end user. And this is what that looks like. We are currently looking at quarter four. You can go ahead and kind of change that as well. And then you can kind of see, right, with all zeros, obviously, quarter one, 2020, we're not there yet. But here you can kind of see on an individual level how everybody's doing. And then we can also see here the total, right, quota currently is basically zero. We haven't won anything yet, right? But we can kind of see the opportunities, the total number or the total estimated revenues for those opportunities in those different opportunity or I should say forecast stages. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click on the like button and feel free to again, follow me on Twitter or check out my blog. Thanks again. Bye-bye.